Let's get our stamina back. Oh, we are pretty low on food, too, so let's do an F1. And we'll just eat ourselves some fern fronts, some center ferns. They taste like, like cinnabons. They really do, honest to God. They taste like cinnabons. Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to get our base set up. So I spent some time off camera and looked around for another base location, and I decided that we, uh, we're we going to move to a different location than where we were in the last episode. So uh, if I face directly north and press F3, you can see that we are way far to the east, uh, really the southeast part of, of the map. So in terms of the map itself, this is kind of a suck location because <laughs> we're way to the southeast. So we got a lot of trekking to do to get around the map on foot until we can get, you know, a better vehicle, better motor transportation. Um, but the location that I found has uh, a lot of a lot of things going for it. And um, so let's take a look. Uh, first of all, this little area here spawns two crabs. OK, and so that what that means is that we're going to have a constant supply of meat a constant um, way to farm combat points um, for, you know, for our skills. And uh, yeah, so so that's not really a bad thing. And they're, they're going to be a hassle, in, you know, at the moment. But later on, they're just not going to be a big deal. We're, we're, you know, we'll just be able to take them out real easy. In fact, we can take them out real easy now, really, for that matter. But, um, you know, they're a little bit more of a hassle at this point. Um, so we've got that going for us. And there's another crab that spawns in here, too. So we really have two uh, crab spawns. Uh, let's just go ahead and harvest a little more hide off this guy. Um, so, yeah, we got that going for us. But the main reason I chose this location is because it's got the best selection of of prefabs that we can fix up. So so that's going to mean we're going to be able to, you know, get up and, and get going without having to, you know, or to w by spending less resources is what I'm trying to say. Man, my brain needs to work. Actually, it's my brain's fine. It's my mouth that's not working. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. You never know about me, man. Yeah, never know about me. Okay, so did we get everything? Yeah. Um. Oh, I guess it spawns a beetle, too. That's fine with me. We'll get lots of resources off the beetle. Uh, it has a, a crash rover down there in that crater, which we can fix up. But, uh, yeah, if, if you look at this place, before we go up close to it, you can see that there's actually quite a few buildings. So we've got multiple habitats, multiple biodomes, and that's kind of what I was looking for. So even though the map location itself is not ideal, uh, the, lo the build location is great because we have all these buildings and we have, you know, lots of flat area to build uh, or, you know, set up our stuff on. And so, yeah, I'm pretty happy, <coughs> excuse me, with this place. So I uh, off camera, I went back to that other base where I left all our stuff. I took everything down and hauled it all over here, except for a few things that I left there just because it was so heavy. And in, in the process now of setting up storage and also a perimeter, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, for our little camp here. Uh, so I just, right before I started the camera, I went up on that hill and got some more purple berries so that we can make some more um, uh, makeshift patch tape because we, we need this to make the, um, uh, the, the little chest there. Okay, so we're going to do that first. And the way, you, what you can do is... Uh, looks like we have a full stack of leather. What you can do with this is you can actually set up your equipment in such a way that it also functions as your perimeter. Um, I, I thought I had more makeshift patch tape. Am I really out? I mean, I got a little bit right there. Okay, so do I have any more plant or alien fiber? I don't. Okay, we're going to have to go get some more alien fiber. Um... We can get some of that from here. So, you know, one bad thing about the game is that, and I, I sort of kind of mentioned this earlier, is that, you know, plants and stuff like that, you can't get rid of them. Um, at least not unless, there might be some kind of an admin command, but I don't even know, you know, if we can use admin commands um, in, in a survival game. I, I, I looked that up online and, and what I was seeing, even though the information was a bit old, uh, what I was seeing was that um, you, you can't, you can't use admin commands in this game. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure if that's accurate or not, uh, or if it applies, you know, to here and now. But anyway, the point being that without admin commands, whether or not you can use them, you can't, um, 
you can't remove, um, you know, like plants and stuff like that, which is a problem if, you know, if it's going to be right in your base, particularly if it's a, a cactoid. But, you know, it is it is what it is, and we'll just have to work around it. All right, so uh, let's go into F2, and we're going to make some makeshift cloth bundles so that we can put up some more storage chests. So I've got a total of five down, uh, five or six, five down. Okay, so we'll probably do... We'll probably do an, a one more here, and then we're going to stack them. So we'll have a total of 12 chests, and that should, uh, you know, do the job for us until we can make, you know, larger storage a little bit later on. Because there's not a lot of room in those chests. It's, uh, you know, it's it, there's not a lot of storage, so you have to make a lot of them in order to store all of your stuff. So let's make this, and then we're also going to make uh, some stone walls to finish out the perimeter here, and then we'll be safe, you know, from attacks, you know, from the monsters as they, as they come in and try and get us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so now let's just make a bunch of uh, makeshift patch tape with all the purple berries that we got, and then we'll be able to set up more chests. We've got a lot of salvaging, you know, that we have to do. We're going to go out and about and do that at some point in this episode. And if all goes well, my plan is to build the workbench and the fir our first furnace in this episode, too. So that's what we're, uh, what I am hoping to accomplish. Okay, let's hit F2. Let's go to utilities and start uh, cranking out some more. Uh, scrap metal chests. So, yeah, we have 30 scrap metals. So we can make 15. We got hinges. We can make at least 12 more. So we should, yeah, we should be able to make everything that, that we want to make. Okay, so let's put one more right here. Like so. And then we're going to just come along and stack them. Uh, so it, per it, it creates a little perimeter for us, too. Because the creatures won't damage your, your stuff. I think they're supposed to, but I've not seen them do it. Um, so as far as you know, as far as I know, unless again they've changed something here in this new release, uh, you can set up your equipment, you know, and also have it be a barrier at the same time, and they won't they won't damage it. That might change, you know, change in the future uh, because, like I said, I think I think theoretically they're supposed to be able to, but uh, again, I've just not seen it happen. So we're going to take advantage of that for the moment until. The time comes when we can no longer do it that way. Okay, so let's continue building these up here. And that makes a nice little wall. And even, you know, even the bigger guys like the Colossus and the Crabs are not able to, to jump across a, a, a too high uh, wall thing here. So it works out pretty good. All right, so get on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, you know, I'll have to go through and I'll do this off camera, but I'll have to go through and I'll, I'll have to organize everything. But I like to put, you know, ores in one chest, ingots in a chest, food items in a chest, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like you typically would do with most survival games. Okay, are we... There we go. For some reason, it seemed like it wasn't selecting it there for a moment. And one more here. Turn it this way, and boom. Okay, so we got ourselves a nice little wall, and we also have 12 scrap storage chests. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go out and bonk some rocks. Uh, let me put a couple things away. Uh, I'm not. I'm completely not worried about organizing right now. Again, like I said, I'll do that off camera. So let's just put stuff wherever we can put it for now, except for things we need to carry with us. And um, I think I'm going to hang on to that. Let's, yeah, we, prob we probably better keep that stuff too. And the fern berries uh, for food. So we'll do that. Okay, so let's go get some rocks. We're going to need, I believe we need, is it eight rocks per wall? Oh, it's only four. Interesting. That used to be eight. So they, they've actually uh, nerfed that down. Okay, cool. So that won't be hard at all. So we just have to find some rock outcroppings. And I think that's gold. There's gold. Is it? Yeah. There's gold right around our base here. Uh, you know, which is something, of course, we're going to need to make wires and other things like that. Uh, but right now we're looking for rock outcroppings. So let's jump down here. And, yeah. Mind this. Oh, we gotta we got to do our usual turn off the bloom thing. <laughs> oh, boy. So yeah, let me gather up some rocks, guys, and then when I have enough, uh, which won't take me long at all, I'll bring, meet you back at the base and we'll set up some walls. All right, so we are back at the base. Let's go to F2 in the defenses. 
and rock wall. Oh shit! Um, he came in at the. Could you have just waited a couple more minutes, buddy? <laughs> now he's gonna be right in the way. <laughs> Son of a. All right, let's just harvest meat off of him this time because we're gonna need that too. We we've got enough leather. Um, we 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 probably have two or three times more leather than we actually need, but <laughs> that's okay. Um. So, yeah, we're going to also, you know, once we get set up with the workbench and, and all that sort of thing, we're going to make other tools that we can use to, uh, you know, to extract different types of materials from plants and animals, which we'll need for crafting and that sort of thing, too. Like, there's a thing called a, a bio something or other doodle tool that you can extract different materials from plants and so on and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we'll make that and we'll make, you know, pretty much all the stuff and we'll try, you know, we'll try to uh, explore as much of the game as we can and uh, enjoy ourselves while we're playing uh, Osiris. So, yeah, the the problem with the crabs, they need to fix this, is we you can't, it's really hard to harvest the head on them. See, it's just showing the body and not the head, and so that way it, stick, it sticks around because it doesn't think you're done harvesting. Uh, but I want to run the rock wall off the end of this, and so we're going to have to wait for him to disappear. So I guess whilst we're waiting for that, let's look at points, actually. Uh, let's just kind of duck in our little uh, hut here. Um, also, I don't know if I was clear about this. I don't think I was because I was watching, you know, one of my videos earlier when I was editing uh, in terms of the stealth meter. So so the stealth meter, the outer circle that moves, that's the noise that you're making, right? So, you know, as when I run and jump and see it starts to turn from orange to red, I'm making a whole lot of noise. And that's, you know, when enemies can... Uh, detect me and then of course the eyeball if it turns red that means they see you so the eyeballs for vi uh, visual and the outer circles for for noise that you're making so i'm not sure if i was uh, clear on that but yeah that's how that works okay um and the, you know the temperature the one in the middle the inner ring is your your own body temperature or your suit temperature and the outer ring is the environment temperature okay so anyway let's take a look at points while we're waiting for that thing to disappear so uh, I have more points to spend because, you know, I, I was out and about doing stuff. So let's hit the F6 key to bring up the skill tree. We have six stat points. And um, one of you guys were telling me in the comments that I should be putting more points into strength so we can carry more weight. Typically what I do is I, I do health and strength evenly and then stamina kind of follows behind. Um, so I'm, I get it. I understand why you guys are saying to do that because we can carry more weight. But, you know, there's been a few times... When I have damn near died, you know, fighting fighting monsters and that sort of thing. So hmm, I don't know if I want to give up health. I'll tell you what, let's let's favor strength a little bit more, but I'm not gonna like put everything into strength. We're just not gonna do that. So we'll go eight strength, one health, and one stamina. And and oh, I guess I have more points. So let's do another strength, another health, and another stamina. We'll see how things go, uh, you know, from there for the for the attributes. Okay, let's look at our, our skill points. We have 31 combat, 23 engineering, and 36 science. So let's take a look at engineering first. Uh, what is this? This is craft faster. I don't care about that right now. Increased loot amount would be useful for when we're looting the crate. So we'll do that eventually. What is the house thing again? Repair and higher durability. Okay, that's not super important at the moment. Uh, I really want to just keep doing craft faster and get more, or not craft faster, I'm sorry, uh, loot faster and, or salvage faster and get more salvage bonus. So that means we want to go pretty much get all of these here, but we have to take craft at higher health first, which is fine. I mean, that's not a bad one to get. Uh, and let's take this salvage bonus two, and then we're going to just do all of these here. Uh, but we're out of uh, engineering points for the moment. Okay, let's take a look at science next. Uh, science, I want to get this last boost, fruit, nutrition. Uh, I guess we have two of those, so let's get those. That's taken care of. That way, you know, we don't have to eat as much. And then uh, increased fruit yield is going to be important when we start doing our biodome. And increased solar panel output is going to be important when we start building our larger buildings. But I think for now, um, let's just go medicine potency. Um, get that finished, and then we'll start working over in, into this area. This, the spacewalking business, we'll do that at the very end because we won't be, be doing any spacewalking for quite some time yet. All right, let's look at combat next. Uh, this is tool durability and mining damage. This is melee damage and projectile damage. Let's... Tool durability. Let's go... Let's go with more melee damage. And weapon durability... 
Do we have enough points to take this tool durability? We do. Okay, good. So that way we can do these other ones later on. All right. So that is our point distribution. We still have nine combat points, really. Uh, gun durability, not important right at the moment, but the rest of these are going to require more than nine points, I think. Uh, decrease a suit breach. Yeah, that's not a bad one, but suit breach is not that big a deal because you always have a ton of tape to fix it. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to sit on those points so we can finish these out as soon as possible. Because we're going to be, we're going to start mining here very quickly, maybe even uh, in this episode. In uh, so you know, we want to maximize that our efficiency with that for sure. We're done with points. Damn crap is still here. Come on, man, get out of here, dude. You picked the worst place to attack me. Um. Can we move him? You can kind of bump him a little bit. Or can we get to his head and just harvest him? And that would that would be ideal, but yeah, see it's not not registering. Did we get all the talons and all the legs? Legs are done. Body's done. Leg tail. Oh, there he goes. Okay, he's finally buggering off. Stupid crab. Okay. So, F2 and defenses and rock wall. So, we're going to keep this running in the same line as this. And so, let's set that down there. Rock walls are, are generally temporary because later on, we'll be able to build, like, basically what amounts to a force field. Uh, it's called an electrodome. Uh, or, you can also build, like, an electric fence if you prefer to do that way. I kind of like the drone, dome better than the fence, though. Um, I haven't built the fence myself, but I've watched other YouTubers who have done it, and, you know, I, I just kind of prefer the Electrodome instead. So we're probably not going to do a whole lot over here, at least not for now. It's possible that the smaller bugs could come through here. I don't think they can, but they might be able to, but we're just going to block this off. And I can always pick these walls up later, you know, so this is not a permanent, uh, a permanent thing by any stretch of the imagination. Very good. So that means, guys, we are now protected uh, and nothing can get to us. Um, even though there's a space here, the monsters don't typically come through here. At least I've never, I don't remember ever seeing them do that. Okay, we're getting an attack here. So we got some snubs and stuff coming in. Um, but they should not be able to, to get to us. You know, they can't really climb over even this little area here. So we should be good to go. Uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so let's see. What is the next order of business? The next order of business, my friends, is we need to get a workbench going. Oops, I want to do that. We need to get a workbench going, and we need to get a furnace going. So that is the next order of business. I have a whole bunch of salvaging to do. And the nice thing is we can salvage all of this stuff now um, because we have storage that we can put it right into. We don't have to worry about becoming encumbered. So let's do, let's look at the workbench first. So we're going to um, go into F2. We're going to go to utilities. And to make the workbench, we need four scrap metal and some makeshift patch tape. So did I use all of my scrap metal? No, it's right there. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's place our workbench. I think we're going to put all of our tools and stuff along this. Well, do I want to do it that way? Um... Hmm, not sure. Some of the some of the items that you make, the the workbench and the furnace and the 3D printer, that sort of thing that we're going to make has to be outside. So I kind of want to try and put it where it's going to be permanently so I don't have to move it later. One thing to be aware of when you take stuff apart in Osiris, you don't get 100% of your resources back. You only get a portion back. So that's why, you know, one reason why I don't want to, um, you know, set it up and then have to, you know, fix it later. So... This would be a great place to put our, our crafting stations along, except for the fact that we got these damn plants in the way. Um, I wonder if, though, we could... And we can't, you know, we can't really move this stone either. We, you know what we could do is we, we could set them down here, but we're just going to have to hold them out a little ways. That might be the, be the, the way to handle that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have hit F2. We're going to go to Utilities. And uh, I want to put a furnace down, but we need the workbench first to make the crude pipe for the furnace. But I want to look at this for just a second. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. Okay, so I want to basically I just want to save a couple of spots here for two furnaces later on. We'll probably only make one for now, but eventually we're going to make two. So that being said, let's go back to the workbench and we'll rotate it this way. And because it's not lining up perfectly with that and I want it to, I'm going to hold down shift and see that I can make much fine, uh, more fine-tuned adjustments to it. 
And then uh, I'm just going to hold it as far over near, near the sea urchin as we can. And, you know, uh, the good thing about the sea urchin being there, also known as the cactoid, is it's just going to give us a constant supply of alien fiber. <laughs> and there's some other stuff we can get to it from the bio extractor, too. Um, so, you know, not ideal, but is what it is. Okay, so we have ourselves a workbench. Now, if we look inside the workbench, we have some things in here that we can can make. So the workbench allows you to make, uh, you know, the next level tools after, you know, the stone stuff. Uh, so basic metal tools, for example. This is where we, we make leather and leather straps. This is also where we can combine, um, you know, like broken wires and broken circuit boards and other things and make them whole. And we also want to upgrade the workstation to the repair bench as soon as possible. Excuse me. To do that, we need aluminum and lead and leather. Okay. So let's see what all we have. Okay. We're going to grab that big, that stack of hide and we're going to actually turn this into leather. So let's just make um, 25 leather. It takes two hide to make one leather because uh, we're going to need that. Uh, the makeshift chisel is, is very high priority for us, so we, we're going to make that too. Uh, but what I do want to do is, did we happen to luck out? Hey, hold on a second. Let me look in here again. I really want to get the upgrade bench as soon as possible. So I know we have some aluminum. We probably don't have some lead, so we're going to have to probably go mine that. But let's just look. You never know for sure with salvaging and whatnot. We're also, once we get the repair table made, we're also going to be able to repair the bolt rifle. And, um, you know, we just, we're just going to have to be super ultra conservative with the ammunition on it is all. Uh, what's this? That's more aluminum. Let's just grab that for the moment. We're going to need this barrel too for the furnace. So let's grab that. Yeah. I don't see any. Yeah. Those are all empty. Okay. Um, so we don't have lead, but I know where to get it. So. That being the case, then let's not worry right at the moment about the upgrade station. Uh, what instead we want to do is make the chisel. That That's the that most works. important thing we can make right now. Uh, we also want to make the crude metal sword because the crude metal sword takes the place of the stone things. Uh, and then, you know, we, we're going to keep the crab scythe for, for some time because it's still a really good melee weapon, but we're going to upgrade this to the metal sword. But before we, we do that, the, the makeshift chisel is the most important thing. So we need leather straps and a crude pipe. So for a crude pipe, we make that here, and we just make that out of metal. So let's queue up one of those. We might as well just, you know, let the leather finish. Um, actually, we can go ahead and make some leather straps. This just requires three. Yeah, okay. So we can make the straps. We got the crude pipe, and we can go ahead and queue up the chisel. And you're going to have three things going at the same time in the crafting tables. Um, so that, that's pretty useful, too. So now the makeshift chisel, when I have the cursor over, notice it, does, it has a hardness of three, which of course means that we can now mine anything up to um, a hardness of three. Um, you can also, you basically this makeshift chisel takes the place of the bashing stone. So we just really don't need the bashing stone any longer. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye to our bashing stone. Thank you, sir, for your service. I really appreciate it. You did, you did good by us. You did good by us, but we don't need you anymore. So go away. <laughs> uh, I'm going to chuck these stones to, well, let's hang on to them for now, I guess. Uh, again, inventory, when I bring you guys back in the next episode, this inventory is going to be all nice and neat. But for this episode, I'm not going to do all that on camera. So we're just going to put shit wherever we put it, right? Um, so let's just stick that in there. We're going to put that back in there. What is this? Oh, that's zinc. Okay. Um, we must have gotten that from salvaging too. Um, I want to keep that in my inventory. Okay, so... All right, so check this out. This is the makeshift chisel. Uh, so we can har we can now start mining actual ore nodes as long as those ore... Oh, shit, there's a minotaur over there. As long as those ore nodes are three hardness or less. Fortunately for us, lead is is below three hardness. I, mean, I think it's either one and a half or two or something like that. So we can go mine some lead, come back here, and then do the upgrade to get the repair bench. But before we do that, we got to do these things in order, you guys. It's very important. we got to do these things in order. Let's also make ourselves a crude metal uh, sword. So first we have to make a blade out of scrap metal. Now you, you're starting to see why, you know, salvaging is so important because you need to use these salvage parts to make this stuff. And then the crude metal sword requires three leather straps. So let's make three of those. And now we can make the crude metal sword because we got the blade and the straps right there. Look at us and our bad selves. 
That means, ladies and gentlemen, we can now retire the shard blade. Shard blade, thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. You did good by us. Now go away. We just don't need it anymore because now we have a metal sword, which is going to do the same thing um, as the shard blade, but just a little bit better. Okay, crude metal sword, but hey, it's metal. So it's just a little bit better. Okay, nice. So we got that done. Let me look one more time in here. Um, there's not really any point in making the shovel or the makeshift screwdriver. I don't believe those are any better than the basic salvage tool. So we're probably just going to hang on to this until we can make a wrench, but we need a forge to make a wrench. So that's coming up later on. If you guys know for a fact that the makeshift screwdriver is better than the starting tool, let me know. But I don't think it is because I tested it in experimental and it didn't seem to be better, but they could have changed that since then. Um, all right. I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys before, but don't ever make the ax. It is junk. It is absolute crap. Um, even the metal ax is crap. Why? Because it, it has terrible, terrible durability. Unless, unless, you know, they, they fixed it. And uh, the last time I tried it, which was uh, an earlier experimental of, uh, about two or three weeks ago, it was terrible. Uh, and the same thing for the stone axe too. When you're in the early game, you guys don't need the stone axe. You, the bashing stone is all you need. So don't bother making this. It's just not worth it unless they've changed it. All right, cool. So uh, furnace. Furnace is our next thing. So we're going to make, uh, the plan is to make a couple of furnaces and we're going to put them here. But here, let's turn the, our light off so we're not wasting our battery. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see what we need to make the furnace. Uh, so we need, we just need a crude, we need two crude pipes. So we're going to go back into the workstation and we're going to queue up two crude pipes. That requires scrap metal, which we have. We're getting kind of low on the scrap metal, but we're going to get a bunch more when we go do more salvaging. Or more accurately, when I go do more salvaging. That's going to be an off-camera thing. I've showed you guys enough salvaging, you know how it works, so there's no point in me wasting video time showing salvaging. All right, let's go ahead and hit F2. Go to Utilities, click on the furnace. We have everything we need. For, uh, two scrap metal, two makeshift patch tape, a barrel, and a crude pipe. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of turn this at this angle here. And we, you know, actually, we could probably fit three in there later. Because one of the th things that this is going to do for us later on is it's going to create methane fuel, which we're going to need. So I think I'm going to put this, let me think about this for a second. We also are going to have the forge later, and we're going to have the 3D printer and the okay, chem station. But I think we'll probably end up putting those things over here. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right in the center, and I'll probably eventually create two more, one on each side. All right, cool. So, yeah, I did I put that backwards? I think I put I think I put this backwards. Dog got it. That's right. We're going to leave it the way it is for now. I'll fix it later when I have more resources. Okay, so what can we do with the furnace? We can make alloys with the furnace, and we can also um, make uh, some other things. We can make rubber and plastic in here by by uh, feeding in scrap items. But here's the thing you got to know about the furnace. It has four upgrades. You're going to want three of these eventually. Um, the only one that I have not found necessary is the water distillery upgrade. Um, because of the fact that, you know, once you take, once you take these points in water, I mean, you just don't need it. You, you, your water consumption is so low that you just don't need it. Um, but you are going to want in this order is you're going to want the fuel cell upgrade first. You're going to want then the low heat upgrade, and then you're going to want the precipitation collector in that order. The fuel cell upgrade basically allows you to run the furnace without requiring fuel. Before that happens, what you have to do is you have to feed um, alien fiber into the thing to get it to run, and it runs down very quickly. Do we have some alien fiber just to show you uh, how that works, or did I use it all up? I may have used it all up. Uh, oh, here we go. Alien fiber right at the ready. There we go. So we got five alien fiber. So what you have to do is you have to put the alien fiber in here as fuel. Let's grab some scrap rubber and some scrap plastic. Go away, Minotaur. I did not invite you to my party. There's there's kind of an annoying thing that happens in the game here where... What's that? Scrap plastic. Okay. Where if you're in a container... 
So notice that when I look at the container, it outlines it in, in green to, you know, to show that that's the one that I'm actually selected. But if you get into a container like this top one, you know, that has like the, the blue palm fronds. And if you get at it, at, whoa, what the hell that happened? I just, <laughs> I don't know what I just did there. Uh, so this one has the blue fronds in. And if I quickly go down to this one, sometimes it open reopens this one. So you want to, it didn't do it that time, but you want to, yeah, see, it did it that time, right? So I looked up to the top shelf, reopened it fast, but it still opened the bottom shelf. And the reason for that is because it hadn't, it takes it a, a couple, you know, like a, a split second or so to highlight the new chest. And if you're really fast, um, it still, you know, it selects the bottom chest. So when you're very quickly getting down a chest, that's going to happen to you. It's going to be very irritating, but it's just, you know, it's just the way the game works, unfortunately. Okay. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if we could get a couple of scrap plastic and rubber pieces to feed into the thing there. Uh, what's that? Broken glass. That, do we do that in the furnace too? There's some scrap rubber. That's normal rubber. Locate food supply okay. Soon. Well, let's try this. If, if I have, so if I have this in my inventory, can I just do this? Okay. It says fuel empty. How in the hell do we, oh, I'm being stupid. I am being stupid. You guys, duh. You have to actually look at the fuel tank, which is this thing down here. All right. All right. And then you pop the fuel in like this. And, um, but see how, you know, I put five in there. It barely, barely put enough in there. So if we, in fact, it looks like it doesn't even register. Is it, is it using it? Oh, okay. I guess I get, oh, I see what was happening. Okay. You, you have to put it in here, but you actually have to add it from here. Right. So now we have, basically we have 10 seconds of burn time from that fuel, which isn't a lot. So, you know, we can start making some scrap rubber and plastic if we want to and glass if we want to, but, you know, it's going to run out in 10 seconds from the time that I started that, right? So, yeah, it works, but it's a pain in the ass, and it's very easy to do the upgrade for this so that it just runs on its own power. And the way we do that is we go to upgrades. Uh, we want to get the fuel cell upgrade, which requires a fuel cell and one piece of aluminum. I'm pretty sure we have looted of a fuel cell from you know salvage there we go look at that so we got a fuel cell there and is this aluminum yes it is all right we are in business ladies and gentlemen we are in business so we're going to go to upgrade and we're going to do uh the fuel cell upgrade now what that does is it puts like a little wireframe thing around the fuel tank and then we get out our um our tool and we just build it excellent now this has its own fuel cell, and we do not have to feed fuel into it for it to do its thing. It's a beautiful thing. Now it's just going to run in, you know, forever, essentially. Okay, cool. So let's grab this stuff out of here. Uh, the other upgrade that's really important to do early on, as soon as you can, is the low heat upgrade. This essentially allows you to take the heat that the furnace generates and cook meat from it. Okay, so we need a brass, a zamok, and a gold. We might have all that stuff. Let's take a look again from salvaging. You really want to mix it up with me, don't you? Come here. Son of a... Okay. So since we're going to start cooking meat, we might as well get some off of this guy, right? We have to get his legs and his arms. This guy's a creepy looking mofo, too. Yeah, your, your brother's coming. Okay, you want some action too there, buddy? Come on over. I got plenty for you. Did we get all of his stuff? These guys are pretty creepy looking, you have to admit. Hey! Ah, oh, shit. Okay, hold on a sec. What did we miss on this guy? I don't know. It's Sometimes it can be really hard to get them. Let's get our stamina back. Oh, we are pretty low on food, too. So let's do an F1. And we'll just eat ourselves some fern fronts, some center ferns. They taste like, like cinnabons. They really do. Honest to God. They taste like cinnabons. Okay. Uh, so we'll eat those until we get our nutrition all the way back. And then we're good to go. All right, where did that Minotaur go? Let's get rid of him. 
And then we got a scalopod that is also being a pain in the neck. And this is a parasite. Now, if we use the, the metal shard blade, yeah, we still get alien hide, and we don't need any more alien hide. I think we have enough to last us for the whole rest of this playthrough and then some. Uh, so I don't really want to get more alien hide, but you know what we do need to do is we need to replace our crab scythe. Because it's getting uh it's getting pretty broken. So let's go to F1 or sorry, F2 and make a new crab scythe. Because we already have all the stuff in our inventory to do that. Once we get the repair upgrade, though, then we don't have to make a new one anymore. We just simply repair the one we have, and we're good to go. All right, let's get rid of this. Whoops, uh, get rid of that. So what are we doing? We're looking for uh, the low heat upgrade. So we need brass amok and one gold nugget. So let's see. There is a gold nugget. And do we have a brass and a zamok? There's a zamok. So let's grab that. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way that I'm aware of that you can pull one piece off of a stack. You can do shift click, you know, to move in the inventory. You can right click and split it. Um, but there's no way that I'm aware of, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, that you can uh, just pull one off. So it's kind of a hassle when you're looking for specific pieces, but it is what it is, right? Okay, let's go look over here. Do we have any brass? Get out of here. You're going to have to hit his tail to get him out of here, too. Okay, he should go away now. Yeah, see it happen again because I, I switched too quickly. All right. Those of you who uh, have already been playing the game for a while, uh, they have now changed the icon for power cells so they no longer look like batteries, which is always a source of confusion. Uh, all right, guys, so I don't think we have any brass. Uh, which is kind of a bummer, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so here's the thing. Can we actually, can we make it? So brass requires zinc and copper. Oh, yeah, I think we can make it. Because uh, we had we had a zinc in one of these right there. Look at us and our bad selves. Okay, let's make ourselves a brass. Oh, we need one copper. Uh, do we have a copper? I hope we have a copper. I think we have a copper. we got to have a copper. Everybody has a copper. Oh, Look at that. That's meteorites. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we've seen these yet in in this um, new playthrough here. Every once in a while, the game will send meteorites down to the planet, and those meteorites um, are uranium, and there's also usually like a little bit of lithium with them too. So you can harvest those. Used to be in uh, the earlier stable uh, game, the uh, meteorites were plutonium that it would send down, um, but now it's uranium. But you can make plutonium from uranium later on when you get, um, you know, the right stuff. So anyway, that's what that's about. We can go up and harvest those at some point if we feel so inclined. What are we looking for? We're looking for copper. Okay, nothing there. I have. I'm sure I have at least one copper nugget somewhere. Right there. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, we even have more zinc too. Okay, so let's make. A, a brass alloy. Put that in our inventory. So we got the brass alloy. And do we have... Uh, let's go back to upgrades. Low heat. So we have... Uh, wait, didn't I just... Didn't I just pick up a Zamok? Or did I... Did I, did I, I must have put it back. I'm such a noob. What the hell, man? Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. Now we should be able to do our low heat upgrade. Yep, look at that. It's a beautiful thing. So we click on this. It puts the, the little wireframe thing around there. We grab our, our, our multi-tool and we build the low heat upgrade. And basically then what we can do is just stick meat in there and cook it up, which we're going to do now. And this will be our first meat. So we got a little bit of meat. Actually, I got quite a bit of meat there. Uh, we, we can only cook tissue. We can't cook like the crab meat. We're going to have to wait till we get a kitchen later on for that. But we do have, I've got meat all over the place, man. What the heck? What the heck? Okay. So let's go over here. Uh, press F to use and we have, we can make grilled alien meat. So we're just going to click the little 
the green plus will basically queue up every, everything that you have resources for. It'll make as many as you can, uh, or you can click one at a time if you want a specific number. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit better food, you know, than center ferns and stuff like that. We're moving up in the world, uh, but we won't see the really good food until we can make the kitchen, uh, which won't happen until we get a habitat in place. Next thing on the list, I think, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's look at this for a second. We do want to do the precipitation collector. That's going to get us methane. And, you know, I guess, do we have an extra thing of water? If we do, I'd have to pour them out, which I kind of don't like to do, especially in the early game. Oh, we got so many of them, though, it's probably not going to make a difference. Just want to make sure I don't have an empty one already. Eh, we don't. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Then we're just going to grab one of these oh, for Pete's sake. One of, one of these. So let's just find the one that's like the lowest. I'd say this one's probably a little bit lower than that one. Or they're, they're very even. And what we're going to do is we're going to drink as much as we can, which isn't going to be much because, you know, we have, we've taken those skills and we're just going to dump the rest of this out. I know it's a waste and there's a way you can, you can avoid doing this later on. You can build yourselves a liquid tank, like a big tank, and you can dump the water in there, but we, we're not ready to do that yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and empty this out. So I get a, a you know, just a blank uh, or I'm sorry, an empty thing. And let's just make this upgrade now, too, because it takes a long time for the precipitation collector to build up the methane fuel. So we might as well get it going now. And that way, when it comes time for us to use it, it'll be ready to go for us. We need this to make plastic later on. To make plastic from scratch as opposed to making plastic from scrap plastic. Okay, so we've got all the upgrades done on the furnace, except for the, the water generator thingamadoodle, which I don't think we need. And we've got another thing of cactoid stuff there and so now the next thing we want to do is we want to go find ourselves some lead so that we can upgrade our workbench to a repair bench all right so let me offload a few things here again we're just going to put stuff haphazardly we don't care that's just going to go wherever the hell it goes i am going to keep those with me um we're going to put all the ores back and all of the resources, crafting items, that sort of thing. We'll keep the cloth with us in case we need to make another crap sh scythe. And yeah, that's pretty good. That, that empties, empties us out pretty good. Oh, we don't need to take the glass with us. Let's put that down here. Uh, I don't think, have I showed you guys the scanner yet? I don't think I have. So let's look at that real quick. In fact, we're going to use the scanner to find some lead. Um, so let's put that down in the number four slot and uh, I had something else in my mind. Oh, right. We're, we need to grab our meat out of here. So we have 19 pieces of meat. Very, very good. So we got some food now. Um, all right. So here's, here's what you would do if you didn't already know where the lead is. And I actually don't know where the lead is, but my my spreadsheet knows where the lead is. <laughs> um, there's actually two places you can find lead. You can find it in mine one, which is kind of far away from here. Um, or you can find it in um, uh, at 8 to minus 11, 5. So that's also kind of far away from here. Yeah, because we're, we're like way in the southeast. Hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like we, we have a trek in front of us, but because I really want to get that repair table upgrade going. So let's say though, we, we had no idea where lead actually was on, on the, on the map. Okay. So hold on a second. Let me look at something again here real quick. So 8.2 lat is going to be way up in the north, and then 11.5 is going to be in the northwest. Yeah, it's about as far away from where we are as, <laughs> as you can freaking get. Gosh, gosh dang it. Okay, well, you know what? Um, Maybe, let's, let me think about something here. It might be actually quicker for us to go to the blood forest. Oh, wait a minute. Is there lead in mine too? Whoa, shit, Ugh. you little bastard. I can't remember if there's lead in mine too or not. 
Let's go check because it, it, even if it isn't, um, it's kind of on the way. So we're not really going to go way out of our way to do it. Um, meat does a pretty good job of healing. Well, it heals five points, which isn't terrible. So, you know, you can use that as a healing thing too. Uh, but we're going to also have to take a bandit here. Uh, okay, so we're at full health. That little bastard there is a gnat. He only comes out at nighttime. And he's he's actually fairly easy to kill. Uh, let's inspect him. Yeah, so he's a gnat. And yeah, he's just he's a, a nocturnal critter. There's also another nocturnal critter called an arachnoid. He's very scary looking and he's one of the more dangerous um, monsters in the game. These guys are not super dangerous. They're just scary looking and a pain in the ass. Well, they're all a pain in the ass, but... Okay, so let's go ahead and head up here. We're going to hop into mine too because I, I just can't remember. I'm having a little bit of a brain fart here. I can't remember if there's lead in there. If there is, we're golden. If not, we're going to have to run up to mine one in the Bloodleaf Forest because that's going to be closer than the actual lead deposits uh, on the map. Okay, so let's see... Uh, where am I at again? Yeah, we want to go north. So yeah, let's go this direction. What we're going to also do along the way is we're going to stop at the Phoenix uh, crash site because the, the quest wants us to do that. Um, and we're going to start mining ores that our pick can handle. So that's just a rock outcropping there. Yeah, okay. So anything that's three hardness or less, our, our pick can handle. Let's go salvage this satellite disk because we might get some decent stuff off of it. We can't mine iron yet because iron's a hardness of four, right? See, so it doesn't work. You guys are just really begging for it, aren't you? Come here. There you go. There you go. Um, oh, I I forgot to show you how you use your scanner. What a what a noob. Okay, so to use your scanner, what you want to do is equip it, right? Notice that when I do that, look at the MIDI map in the upper right-hand corner. See, this is what it normally looks like. It's kind of a greenish color, but when you equip your scanner, the it turns orange. And if you go into F3, this little radius that you see is the area of the scanner. And I can use the plus and minus keys on my number pad right to uh to zoom in or out to find stuff okay so now we are we want to lo start looking for ores that you know is less than three hardness um so like aluminum for example or or sulfur or whatever but what we're actually after specifically right now is we're after lead which is only a hardness of 1.5 so we're going to turn that on, and then what you would do is you'd start walking around on the map and start looking for lead, and it'll show up. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, okay. I, I was wondering. Oh, I don't know what that little dot right there is. But anyway, uh, it'll show up if you if you come within range of your scanner. So then you would just walk around and keep your eye on your mini-map. You can also zoom your mini-map in and out, too, with the plus and minus keys on the number pad uh, until you start seeing you know, uh, the deposits on the screen. And they're going to be, I think the lead is like a dark gray color. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. So that's how you use your scanner, basically. Um, later on, we'll be able to build a satellite dish at our base. And the, and once you build the satellite dish, then you essentially have a scanner on the whole map all the time. I, I, well, I think it's on the whole map. Might be just be around your base. I'm not really sure, but uh, we'll, we'll look at that, you know, when the time comes. Okay, so let's go here and grab this and let's... Thump this dude. You overgrown tick. Come here. Boom. There you go. Okay. So uh, let's just, uh, let's grab this solar panel in particular because sometimes you can get some pretty decent stuff off of these. As soon as we get a forge, our number one priority after that will be to make a wrench, because a wrench is way faster than this thing. We got some propellant tanks out of that. Okay. Let's just grab the rest of this, because, you, again, we might get some decent stuff, or we might not. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? The the white, the little white dot that you see on the mini map there, that's actually the, the meteorite. So the meteorite will drop um, like little chunks of lithium and uranium that you can pick up. Um, and then you can also actually mine it too. But we, we can't mine it right now because it's a hardness of five. So if we mine this, we would get uh, uranium from it. Um, but anyway, you can still pick up the little chunks from those too. So let's grab this uh, crab talon because we're going to need it. Uh, there's a couple other crab pieces that we're going to need for stuff too. One other thing I want to tell you before I, I leave you, uh, let you go again, is I just realized that the Bloodleaf Forest is actually going to be closer than mine too. So we're just going to head over there uh, because that's where we're going to find uh, lead. Now, down here, that all those buildings down there, that's that's Phoenix Base. And that's where the quest wants us to go. But we'll do that on the uh, probably on the way back um, towards the beginning of, of tomorrow's episode. Because, yeah, we're just seriously running out of time. So let's just go to the Bloodleaf Forest, which is going to be kind of that way-ish. Uh, I'll show you the lead, and then we have to wrap things up. We'll do the upgrade station in tomorrow's episode, too. All right, guys, we're at the Bloodleaf Forest now. Um, How hard is sulfur? It's only 1.5. Okay, let's grab some of this. We don't need a lot of sulfur, uh, but since we're here, and since we can mine it, I'm going to grab a little bit of it. And um, But what we're actually here to do, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do that on the way back out. What we're actually here for is the lead, so we can make the upgrade station. So let's go into mine one here. Okay, and then in mine one, you go in just a, a little ways here. And we should, yeah, I was going to say, we're going to find skeleopods in here, but let's see if we can avoid them for the moment. But once you get back into these kind of like tunnels areas, then we have lead here. And notice lead is 1.5 1. hardness. We also have silver, which is 2.5 hardness. And we can mine both of those with our makeshift uh, chisel. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to grab a bunch of lead. I'm going to grab a bunch of silver. Uh, a little further back in the mine, there's also mercury. Mercury is red. And I think we can get that too. Yeah, that's one and a half hardness. So I'm going to load up on on uh, lead, mercury, and silver while we're in here. And then when I go back out, we can't get cobalt because it's too hard. So we'll have to get that later. Uh, I'm going to grab some more sulfur on the way out and then just work my way back uh, to the base. Uh, and I'm going to let you guys go here because, again, <laughs> we've, we've got so, so long. Um, so in tomorrow's episode, the plan will be to do the upgrade station and then we'll go uh, we'll go visit Phoenix base and get that done uh, for the quest. And then after that, um, we'll probably start working on the forge. Because once we can make the forge, then we can make the diamond chisel. And once we have the diamond chisel, we can mine anything in the game. Okay? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you've already subscribed. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. It does help the channel. And you guys are friggin' awesome. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Share out the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.